Hi everyone, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about creating character arcs. Hopefully this helps you for Nano, Camp Nano, any of the things that you're going to be working on. Um, I, <laughs> Emily Bourne recommended this and uh, outlining, how to create an outline or something like that. And I had just done my whole series on like writing craft books and I and she like she started doing her own and she really liked these two especially like in combo and so I was like okay I'll give them a go I really want to you know improve upon my books and so I was like sure so I started reading <laughs> the character arcs and there's positive flat and negative in here I'm just gonna comment on the positive ones um, Kim does or er, actually meh. KM does a lot of really great examples throughout I'd actually back when I was starting to learn how to write had like absorbed every page on her website I feel like um, I think a lot of this information is on there if y'all can't buy her book but I'm gonna be putting some of my little cliff notes in my members only page so be sure to sign up for my newsletter if you haven't and then you'll get access but um, in that page also if you need references for starting I have Save the Cat, Romancing the Beat, Writing Irresistible Kidlet, Wired for Story, and Story Genius in there. So um, if y'all need any little extra help or templates like that just head on over there. So AM does a really great job going into all the basics. I feel like this was a great book for basics and as I got into it I was like I don't know how to wrap my mind around where she's saying these arcs happen or the things in the arcs happen versus how save the cat is and I feel like save the cat is your outline plus your arc at the same time maybe or that's how like I read it and so I'm super curious how creating character arcs and then outlining your story are gonna mesh in my brain because I had some trouble with this one. So she goes through figuring out the lie your character believes, their wants and their needs, your character's ghost, which is like why they believe their lie, and then their characteristic moment, which is the moment they show up on the page, which should definitely be like page one. <laughs> she goes into like what all you should be revealing in that characteristic moment that needs to be memorable and hook the reader. Then like your whole setup part is your normal world that you're introducing your character for. And then she starts breaking down the acts. I love how she broke down the acts. So she says act one is the hero's decision to act. Act two is the action it's self. Act three is the consequences of the action. And this came from A Writer's Journey by Christopher Fogler. And she breaks down the six parts of the character arc in the first act. And that is reinforce the lie, indicate the character's potential to overcome the lie, provide the character's first step in discovering how to grow and change. Number four, give the character an inciting event to refuse five evolve the character's belief in the lie and six make the character decide and that's going to jump them into act two um she asks questions at the end of every chapter that you ask yourself um if you've included or how you're going to do that in your story so i, I think it's a really great down to the tiniest detail in your story which if you're like part Planter, part pantser like I am like it's sometimes too much like I need to discover the story but um, she goes into the first plot point before you get to the first half of the second act she says the first plot point happens around the 20 to 25 percent mark and then she goes on to say the first act is about setting up your character's lie it's what they're going to battle with the whole book basically the second act is about destroying the lie and helping the character find the truth that will allow them to combat the external conflict and grow into a whole person. So you plan your first plot point to tear away your character's safety net and force them to step out into the biggest adventure of their life. And so you leave the normal world going into the second act. And um, I like what she said about this too. She said the first half of your book is a character reacting to events and the second half is about them taking action. So like once that midpoint hits. She doesn't go into pinch points in this one. I'm assuming they'll be in the outlining one as this is more character arc style. Um, I have like some mm -mm thoughts about pinch points because I'm so used to Save the Cat and I never just, I just never really understood pinch points. As much as I read it on her website, I was just like, whatever, I feel like I'm forcing stuff. So I do recognize it when it's in other people's books. Um, I just don't know that it's a style that I want to use. 
So then for the second act, she also breaks down the different parts of the character arc, like I said, for the first act. And she like does a whole thing, a whole chapter on the midpoint. And then she gets into the second half of the second act and she keeps breaking down your character arc, like what your character is going through that whole time. And then after she breaks it down, each chapter ends with questions to ask. She says, use the first half of the second act to explore the depths of your character's personality, beliefs, and desires to create endless possibilities for fun, conflict-powered scenes, which in my brain screams fun and games in the beat sheet. <laughs> At the midpoint, she says, this is when your character finally gets it. The puzzle pieces fall into place, they realize what they must do to win the conflict, and they adjust their actions accordingly. They identify the truth your character must recognize and create a mind-blowing scene to support it. It should be one of your most memorable chapters in the book. When I read that, I was like, mine aren't. They're like, oh, we're official now. Oh, we had our first kiss. Like, I don't know that they're like memorable, but <laughs> hopefully my whole book is memorable. Um, so the second half of the second act, your character is learning the value of implementing the truth into their life. They see the truth in action and begin to value it more than they value the thing they want. But out of habit, they'll betray the truth. However, they're too far gone on the truth to fully abandon it. They're already a changed person and they'll prove that in act three. So the third plot point is the most important moment of their arc. It's the low moment in their story and the lie appears front and center and they have to confront it and defeat it. So... Uh, the low point, so like, I kept comparing this to Save the Cat, so I was like, okay, they're in there, you know, all is lost, darkest night of the soul, before they go into Act 3, and so I think this is kind of where that hits. So it rips away their options and forces the character to be honest with themselves, about themselves, and their situation. In the climax, they'll rise from the ashes, ready to battle from a place of inner wholeness. So they're like really struggling with their lie and fighting it to overcome it. So this brings us to the third act. So they did the thing that brought them to their lowest low and now they're wondering if the truth, if going for the truth instead of the lie was worth it. Like if they lost somebody, was it worth losing them? Should they have just kept believing in the lie? This is where you're gonna be tying up any loose ends that you have. You're gonna test the character's devotion to the truth and their growing pains and shedding the lie to move forward to face the ultimate test in the climax. The climax in Save the Cat has like those five parts and I never do them fully. I don't know how to do them in a contemporary very well and I probably should read the examples towards the back of the book more but <laughs> KM did a few examples that I had read and then some that I hadn't so I was just like Meh, on those but I did enjoy her examples that I knew what she was talking about. <laughs> There's a lot in Save the Cat that I was like I haven't read this or seen this I don't I don't know what this is. <laughs> so the climax is the reason for the story. The pro tag hangs onto the truth to defeat the antag. It's a scene or a series of scenes it brings the primary conflict to a resolution that fulfills the book's every promise while still surprising the reader. It begins near the 90% mark and ends right before the final scene or two. You could also have a fake climax if you've got like multiple subplots to tie up. So this could be like a little climax and then you have a bigger one. This climax helps them complete their arc because they're fully invested in the truth and they defeat the lie and so they finish their arc. But now we get that little like almost epilogue moment. You just see your final scene called the resolution. So she says this caps the character arc with emotional mopping up <laughs> it bookends the opening scene in the new world so it's like that whole mirror image thing um, if there's something that happened in the beginning you just mirror that now like how it's changed or how their world has changed it answers the thematic question in the beginning kind of like that whole message you're trying to send the whole book <laughs> And yeah, that's kind of like my recap of uh, the positive arc. And I'll have way more expanded in my members only section. I just don't want to like bog y'all down with a ton of stuff. So that's kind of what's in it. Um, basically, it's just an advertisement almost for uh, creating character arcs and letting y'all know what's inside. Some of the basics uh, were helpful in thinking about your character. Um, go over to her website. I'm going to link it down below because her website is phenomenal and she breaks down a ton of different stories and movies so that you can see how they did it. And um, yeah, I just love her. She goes, breaks down outlining on there too. Um, and she explains pinch points <laughs> more. And she goes through your characters, like their lie, their want, their need. Like she super breaks it down for you guys. If y'all uh, need any help on that, head over to her website. But anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this one. Um, I'm still, <laughs> I will get back with y'all if I read the outlining one in time. But like I said, I'm kind of like a pantser discovery writer. So I think for Nano, I'm just gonna like, write and then come back to these books and be like okay now what 
how do I do this? <laughs> what uh, crafting book is y'all's favorite? So far mine is still Save the Cat and Romancing the Beat in like concert with each other but um, I've really enjoyed Story Genius for digging down into my character which actually this does um, pretty good too for the whole lie want need ghost thing so yeah there's a bunch of different um, books telling you know little variations on the same thing so I'm curious what your favorite is and if you go into a book starting with what your character's arc is going to be. Do you know their lie, want, need, ghost? Do you know where they're going to start? What's going to happen at the midpoint, climax, and like how it ends? Or yeah, even their inciting incident and then how it ends. Do y'all go in knowing those things? I think that's usually what I know. I know enough about my character arc, but not all the in-between business. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Give this a like, share it if you want to, hit subscribe if you'd like to. Good luck with NaNo or your writing project if you're not participating in NaNo and I will see y'all next time. Bye!